My name is Kapil. I work at HashiCorp. And today, in this demonstration, we are going to look at the PKI Secret Engine in HashiCorp Vault. So as you can see, I've also shared the code in this GitHub repository. If you want to do it on your own, on your laptop, or any other host which is Docker enabled, you can try it out yourself. All right, so the setup looks like this. I run Vault uh, within a Docker container uh, in dev mode on my laptop. And then I enable the secret engine, PKI secret engine, to configure the root CA. So if you have your own root CA, you do not need to use that. But for a demonstration in a dev environment, I think it is very helpful to just use Vault as the root CA. Then I'm going to enable another PKI secret engine, which is going to act as the intermediate CA. And I'm going to use the common name as example.com. And once I have the intermediate CA, I'm going to send a certificate signing request to the root CA. And once this request is signed, then I'm going to set up the intermediate CA with the new certificate received from the root CA. All right, so once I have this environment set up, I'm going to create a new policy, a new role uh, in Vault so that I can generate new certificates using the intermediate CA PKI secret engine and we are going to create one called for the common name test.example.com, which I'm going to use for my Nginx server. I'm going to configure the Nginx server, set up the private key, set up, also provide it with the issuing CA and the certificate that we get from the intermediate CA. Once done, we can test it out by uh, connecting to the Nginx server using a browser. So it's pretty simple. We're also going to look at some features like audit logging and also how you can revoke the certificates and list the certificates and things like that. Let's jump right into it. All right, so as my previous demos, I have written some scripts to enable you and enable myself as well to repeat this demonstration one step after the other. So as the first step, I'm going to start Vault uh, this is not the enterprise version, but the open source version of Vault and PKI engine, secret engine is available in the open source version itself. So we do not need the enterprise version for this demonstration. Let's start Vault. So the Vault is already running in dev mode, as you can see, as a Docker container. Pretty straightforward, not too much explaining required here. What I do next is enable audit logging on Vault. And I'm enabling two audit logs. One uh, is to file, and the path is audit, vault audit.log. And the another one is also file, but I'm logging raw uh, details in this log so that we can actually see the real values, the secret values, so that we can test it out and understand what the log is containing and if everything is working properly. So as a next step, I'm going to set up vault as the root CA. So let's see how we do that. So you can see I'm enabling the PKI secret engine on PKI path itself. I'm giving some maximum lease time to live value for all the certificates that will be generated under this particular PKI secret engine. Then I'm generating the root CA using the PKI root generate internal path or API giving a common name and time to live, and I'm storing the output in pkiceroot.json file. Once done, I'm extracting the certificate out into the ca.pem file. This is important because later we are going to use this and upload that into my keychain on my MacBook so that we can trust the certificate, and then the browser will also trust it. And then lastly, we are just publishing the URLs for this particular root CA. So let's run this command to generate the root CA. And you can see all the commands were successfully executed. And I have this new certificate generated. And I have the certificate and issuing CA, which are both the same in this case, because this is the root CA. And I have extracted the certificate out into a separate file to use later. Now we have the root CA set up in our vault instance. Next, I'm going to set up the intermediate CA. Let's clear this out. 
you can see I'm enabling the PKI secret engine for intermediate CNL at this path, PKI underscore int. Once done, I'm again setting up a default max TTL. Now this is the important part. I'm using the PKI intermediate generate internal. I'm setting it up as the intermediate certificate authority and I'm extracting the CSR out of the output. So the output contains the certificate signing request and I am taking it out so that I can send it to my root CA for signing. So the certificate signing request is then sent to my PKI root, the root CA that we created earlier and I'm using the PKI root sign intermediate API call or path to get the certificate signed from the root CA. So you can see I'm sending the CSR and as an output, I'm getting back the intermediate certificate, which is here. So now at the end of this, I can then send this certificate back to my intermediate CA, and then my setup is complete. So if you do, do not use Vault as the root CA, you are going to send the CSR to the root CA as a result from the CSR, you will get the certificate, which you are going to put back into Vault using this command PKI and intermediate set signed. So the signed certificate needs to go back to Vault intermediate certificate. Once done, again, we are just publishing the URLs and then we are done. So let's execute these commands to set up our intermediate CA. So you can see everything ran successfully and I have the certificate signing request here. I have the certificate intermediate certificate here and that's it, right? So we do not need to do anything else. We are set up with the intermediate CA as well. Now that we have completed these steps, the next step we need to take is to create a role so that we can consume this intermediate CA. So I'm going to do just that. It's a very simple command here. Now I have created a role, which is actually going to be used uh, by a user to create intermediate uh, certificates or request certificates from this intermediate CA. All right, next step I'm going to do is set up a policy. So at the end, I'm going to create a user and I want to provide this user with the policy, minimal possible permissions and rights to generate the intermediate CA. So before I generate it, I would like to show you how this policy looks. So you can see I'm giving it the right to create an update the PKI on the PKI int path, which is our intermediate CA. It is able to list the certificates, revoke the certificates, and it is also able to read the root certificate. All right, so these are some of the policy uh, parameters I'm providing. So let's run this policy creation. So we are just creating the policy right now with this command and the policy is created. As a next step, I'm going to create a username password to access Vault. You can use any kind of authentication mechanism. You can use a cloud authentication mechanism like AWS IAM roles, or you can use Azure Active Directory. You can also use Active Directory, Kerberos, whatever is required in your environment, you can use that. But for this demonstration purpose, I'm just using username and password. You can, of course, also use app role if you want to automate the pulling and pushing of certificates. All right, so let's create this user and we are going to, of course, give this user this policy that we created. So 07, so the user is created and it has the vault username is couple and I have the user ready. So let's now that we have the user ready, we can sign into this user or log into this user. And then we are able to generate certificates as that user. All right, so you can see I'm logging into that user that I created earlier. I get a token back. And then I'm using that token basically to uh, create these requests to generate a certificate. So this is the first request I'm using to generate 
a certificate using the intermediate CA. And you can see this is the role I created earlier. And I am putting this created role for test.example.com inside this file. And we will look at it. And then the most important values that we need out of the certificate is the private key, the certificate itself, and the issuing CA, which we are going to extract and make ready for our Nginx server later. All right, so let's run these commands and we can look at the certificate as well. So you can see test.example.com certificate was created. It has the private key, it has the issuing CA, and also the certificate that we need, right? And I have extracted all the values needed for my web server. First of all, the key and the, the certificates and the issuing CA within one file, which will be consumed by the Nginx server. All right. So now that I have a certificate ready, I wanted to show you as well that I can create multiple certificates, not just one. And this is just a sample where I'm creating five certificates. So if I run this command, I will generate multiple certificates. And this can all be automated, programmed, and you can easily generate certificates. And this particular user can only generate certificates with this particular intermediate CA and nothing else in the vault environment. All right, moving on, let's now start our Nginx server. So you can see this is also running in a Docker container, but I'm providing two volumes, one with the certificate paths and one with the configuration for this Nginx container. And I'm also enabling the port 443 because we are going to use HTTPS, of course, in this case. And you can see my configuration. I have set up the server and enabled, enabled 443 SSL and also named the server and provided the path to the two certificate and the key that we just generated. And these are available here. All right, so let's start the Nginx server. So Nginx is now started, and now we can go to our browser and check it out. All right. So if I come here and I go to test.example.com, you can see that I'm able to reach this Nginx server, but my certificate is not trusted. And it is the certificate that we use, test.example.com. Now, if we want to enable the trust for our browser, we should add the certificate to our machine. And we can do that by adding the certificate to my keychain. This is the ca.pem that was created for the root certificate. So if we, if we trust the root certificate, we can make this happen. All right, so we have added the certificate, but of course it is not trusted. And if we start trusting it, we should be able to. So now you can see there is no warning and we are able to see that we have the example.com intermediate authority and example.com root certificate authority which is being used for this Nginx deployment. All right. What else do I have in this demo for you? So I also wanted to quickly go over others, or some of the other commands like listing of certificates. So you can list certificates with this command easily. And let's see um, how the output is. So you can see all the keys, all the identifiers are listed. What else can we do? We can also read one of the certificates. So I copied over all these keys to this file. And as part of read certificate, I'm just reading the first one. So you can read a certificate as well using APIs, using command line of Vault. And you can see it is not revocated. And then I can also revoke a certificate. So I'm going to revoke the certificate, this one. So you can see with the PKI int revoke command, providing the serial number, 
I can revoke it also easily. And then you can see that it is revocated because we read it again. And lastly, you can also delete a certificate. For that, we have the command called tidy, and it will clean up all the revocated, uh, revocated certificates uh, in the background. So if we run this command, you can see that the operation has been started and will continue to run in the background. All right, so that's all I had. So what did we do today? In this demo, we created a root CA with Vault. We configured an intermediate CA, and then we used the certificate signing request and got that signed from the root CA. Once we did that, we had the intermediate CA enabled. We created a new certificate, provided it to our Nginx server, and also trusted that certificate on our machine, and we were able to consume that certificate or, or look at that certificate from our browser itself. And we also saw some of the other commands like listing, reading, revoking, and uh, tidying of certificates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.